All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome Charles Howell to the 2021 Sony Open. Uh, Charles, this is your uh, 20th consecutive start here at the Sony Open. What is it about this tournament that you've enjoyed the most over these last two decades? Oh, uh, well, enjoy Hawaii, number one. Um, you know, this is a, uh, a tournament that we always enjoy coming back to. Um, family loves it here. Uh, the kids get to see a lot of their friends and um, of the other uh, players. And so, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great place to even come to this time of year. And, uh, you know, why lies the golf course? I enjoy playing. Uh, we don't play a, a lot of old style golf courses, um, you know, quite like uh, this one. So it is nice to you know, play this style of golf with some wind and right on the ocean, and I don't, uh, I don't see anything bad with it. Over the years, what have you learned uh, about this golf course? Is this a course where you feel like more reps, more rounds benefits a player? Um, you know, it, it's a golf course where it's really hard to keep the ball in the fairway. So, um, you know, it, it's a golf course where you um, almost have to play, play your angles, play your misses, etc. Where um, you'll see a lot of balls, especially if the wind stays up this week, a lot of balls land in the fairway and, and bounce out into the rough. So uh, it is important to know what sides of the fairways uh, you, that you can miss and play from. Um, you know that, and uh, you know the greens don't have a ton of slope in them. So if you do get the putter going, um, you know guys can make a lot of putts, which uh, you know last couple years has not been very strong winds, and guys have uh, shot some low scores because of it. All right, very good. I'll open it up to questions for Charles now. All right, perfect. Go ahead and put in the chat if you'd like to ask Charles a question. We'll go with Doug Ferguson, please. Charlie, I, I realize that you um, hate talking about Hawaii, so let's shift gears. You <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Um, just given your uh, just just given your history, I thought you'd be worth asking um, what you thought about Augusta in in April with with limited attendance. Uh, how much of a difference that would make, and and whether you see that as as a uh, I hate to say positive or a negative, but were you hoping for more? I guess. Um, <clears throat> well, first off, from playing it in November with no fans, not that I didn't know this. But I didn't give enough credit to how much the fans and the whole atmosphere builds and makes the Masters. So the you didn't know what you're missing until you missed it. That is correct. I didn't. I didn't give enough appreciation to the importance of the fans, the everything. So I think with that said, number one, any fans we get brings us closer back to the Masters, and so I was really excited to hear that. Um, now, I need to play my way in it, um, which obviously is, is always a, is a goal, not just for me, but for everybody. But it's a step in the right direction, and I, I do think it is a positive. And if the Masters feels like they can host fans um, and host them safely, then they clearly think that we're making progress on this. And because knowing them and knowing the committee members, which I do, you know, they're always going to err on the side of caution and they're always going to make the right decision and do the right thing. And so if they feel like we can host some amount of fans safely, I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good luck in the Sony Open this week. Well, thank you. All right, next we'll go with Brian. <laughs> um, one more Masters question, Charles. What's up, boss? Um, how is uh, your preparation any different, if at all, with those with, with two Masters so close together? Um, so the, the preparation for November was quite different, uh, simply because the, the grasses were different. Uh, not all the overseed had come in. And so you're, you're chipping actually from some Bermuda and then you get the, the, the grain, et cetera, et cetera. So the November one was quite challenging. I think going back to April, I think you'll see guys maybe get back in the routine of flying up there a week or two early and playing a couple days. Uh, you know, kind of back into the quote, n normal master's time, if you will. So um, I, I don't think it'll break many players' hearts if it stays in April because so many guys are used to the April masters. They're used to the overseed being in, uh, the green speed being a certain way, et cetera, where the November one was quite a bit more uh, different and challenging to prepare for. And then just to 
actual Sony Open question um, to bring it back to that. Um, you know, your record here speaks for itself, but I'm curious how how you view it, having not won, but having had so many, you know, top tens, top fives, and so forth. Um, and, and if there was any moments of frustration or felt like ones you should have won, or, or how you how you view it, I guess. Yeah. So, well, this tournament has obviously been really good to me. Um, it's an event that, uh, Lord willing, I'll never miss uh, as long as I can play. And so it's for sure. I mean, I, there's been a, a couple that, you know, I've kind of messed up there at the end or could have played a bit better to uh, maybe have won. But it, it's been such a great event, uh, you know, to me. Um, not only the people... That got away from you. Uh, well, the... There was a couple back there, it, but you know, honestly, and and I, I think looking back on it though, I'm more impressed that that I've had as many top ten finishes as I've had here. Um, you know, simply because it is the first event back, if you will, after a break, and you don't really always know how your game is. Um, I'm kind of a little bit more surprised about that. Um, I, I do love the golf course though, because I feel like it's so different than a lot of the other places we play. I mean, so many golf courses we play now are these huge ballparks and. Um, you know, it's just bash driver everywhere, and and where here I feel like every hole you kind of have to think and know your angles. Um, when the wind blows, uh, the wind obviously is the defense of the golf course, but it I mean it makes it really hard to hit the ball in the fairway here. So uh, you're bouncing it more, you're playing more on the ground here. Uh, I just think it's quite so much different than what we're normally uh, used to in playing. Thanks. All right, we'll go back to Doug Ferguson. You can't ask a short question to save his life, so bear with me. Yeah, fire. Um, but you've lived this. You've lived through this 20, 20 odd years ago. I'd be curious your thoughts uh, or advice, if you had any, for the number of great college players who are, who are coming out and you know doing the exemptions, etc., trying to get a card. When you do it, uh, at what? At how much do you owe the tournaments that gave you a spot? And you know, if you've come out and, and succeeded quickly, like say a Matt Wolf or something like that, mm -hmm. or a Spieth or what have you, uh, how do you balance between trying to set a proper schedule and feeling like you owe uh, some of those sponsors who looked after you when you needed their help? Well, I remember back in 2000, uh, when I first started, I remember uh, handwriting letters to tournament directors and to sponsors, and I, always felt it was important to come back uh, to thank them in a way or to uh, make them aware that, that it meant something uh, to me, that I appreciated them uh, taking a chance to let me in the golf tournament, but then that it meant something I would come back. And, you know, a lot of the young guys now, um, for whatever reason, they seem to, to win sooner. Uh, they're ready to win faster. Um, you know, whatever that is. So, so it is, it, it's really tough for them to balance the schedule because as soon as you win, you're in everything. And, and I understand it. Um, looking back, I would encourage them to play a lot of golf being young because you don't have the obligation of a family. <laughs> you don't have kids. Uh, you don't have a school schedule that you're dealing with. Um, you're not booking a father-daughter dance and a this and a that. And so while you're young, my advice would be play a lot. It's, it's what you do. And we are so fortunate to play the game of golf. Uh, the places we go, the way they take care of us, the purses that we play for, that um, my advice to these young studs, because they are, they're awesome, is to go play a lot, enjoy every minute of it. Is there, was there ever a time where you felt like you needed to go back somewhere? You, you simply couldn't? I mean, there was too many things on your schedule. No, uh, a younger guy. no, but see, but the schedule, as you know, was different back 2000, 2001 than it is now. So, uh, no, it was always easy for me to go back to those uh, events, um, except for uh, Kings Mill at Michelob, where I won there and the tournament went away. So maybe... Uh, <laughs> That's why it went away. It, yeah. I'm quite aware of that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Charles. You got it. All right, we'll go back to Brian Wacker, please. Um, just wondering what your first event, uh, or first professional event that you played in was, and what you remember about that versus 
um, playing as a, as a professional for the first time. In, in other words, can it, can it, where I'm going with this is, is uh, possible for an amateur to ever actually win out here. Um, you know, it hasn't been done in a long time. So, okay, yeah. So my first PGA Tour event ever uh, was the Buick Classic in Callaway Gardens, Georgia, uh, and I was 15. So they gave me a sponsor invite to play. Um, I was paired with Hugh Royer and John Elliott the first two days. They were great to me. Um, clearly, I had no chance of winning. Um, I, I didn't make the cut, it got close, but it was the experience was incredible. I mean, it really got my attention to the overall PJ Tour thing, how great these players are, uh, the difficulty of the golf course setup, et cetera. Now, fast forward, my first event as a pro was the Greater Hartford Open, um, and obviously up in Connecticut, and that was in June of 2000. Um, and, you know, that that gap of, of being able to play in a, a PJ Tour event as an amateur to when I actually played, uh, you know, there's a, those are a lot of golf, you know, growing years, if you will. So I was much more prepared to do it then at age 15, but just the experience. I mean, anytime now to answer your other question, an amateur, yes, older than me at 15, absolutely can win a golf tournament because we see it so many times in the field of 144 players, everybody has a chance to win the golf tournament. So uh, I would for sure say an amateur can win a golf tournament, no question. You think it's easier now or uh, harder now than say 20 years ago? I would say, well, you look at the level of these college players, and let's just say, for example, Matt Wolf or Victor Hovland would have stayed amateur for a couple years and stayed in college, but played some PJ Tour events, absolutely. So I'd say in, in that realm, that regard, it would be easier um, if they were to stay. You know, they tend to be turning pro a little bit earlier now, so that might throw the answer off a little bit. But, but if these guys are a Colin Morikawa were to stay all four years, but then sprinkle in some PGA Tour events in there, absolutely, they could win. And so in that argument, I would say that it's easier now than it would have been, let's say, X amount of years ago. Thanks. And we'll go back to Doug. Yeah, the Callaway thing really got me to thinking, because uh, I've seen so much, especially here at the at the Sony and a few other, when you get uh, someone young who either four spots or, or what have you, They'll get to the course at 7, and they won't leave until after dark because they're trying to soak up every mm -hmm. single second. Do you have any recollections of doing that? Of course, you did that for your first five years as a pro, I realize. Yes. Do you, do you remember what that week was like in terms of how much you wanted to not let it end, if you will? Oh, absolutely. And In fact, I remember uh, not only getting out there at the crack of dawn on Monday and Tuesday to play practice rounds and whatever, but I remember after missing the cut, going out and watching on Saturday and Sunday. So I, I didn't want the week to end. And furthermore, I wanted to watch and compare, well, I drove it to here, where did they drive it? You know, I hit it here, I did this, what are the guys winning doing? Uh, so absolutely, yeah, I remember coming straight back out on the weekend and, and watching it with my parents and, um, and just seeing, okay, how, how, how big is the gap between where I'm at and where these guys are? How big was it? Pretty big. Yes, sir. It, well, it sent me right back to high school and college. <laughs> Did anyone recognize you on the course? <sighs> Not that I remember. Not that I remember. Yes. All right. Thanks, Charles. You got it. All right. I think that's all we've got for you today, Charles. So uh, thank you for your time and good luck this week. Hey, thanks so much. Have a great day.